Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. The main suspect in the case, Gary Giordano, took out a travel insurance policy on Robin Gardner. He's being held in Aruba. My question, why was he the beneficiary and why did he try to cash in on it so quickly? Joining me via phone, Christina Jones, Robin's good friend and roommate. Also here, former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney, my friend Mark Eiglarsh in Miami. And in Aruba, CNN correspondent Martin Savage. Martin, let me begin with you. We're hearing that Gary Giordano is talking to authorities. What's he saying? Well, basically, Lisa, as you may have known, over the past couple of days, authorities had said that he was not cooperating and he wasn't talking. Now they say he is talking, sort of. And what they mean by that is that he's picking and choosing the answers or the questions that he wishes to answer. Primarily, if it's a new question, something they haven't asked him before, he gives a response. If it's something they've asked previously, he says, I've already covered that. And authorities believe that is a tactic on his part to defeat what is one of their common tactics, to ask a person to repeat their story over and over over several days, and they look to see if it varies in any way, shape, or form. So I also asked, you know, what is his attitude during these interrogations? They used one word to describe him. They said belligerent. Lisa? Mm, very interesting. Now, you and I both remember from the very sad Natalie Holloway case that a Rubin law is very different from American law. I call it the catch and release program. You hold people for a period of time, even if you don't necessarily have sufficient evidence to charge them. They can ask questions without an attorney present. How long do they expect to hold him? Well, as you know, recently they were granted a 16-day extension, somewhat unusual because they usually go in eight-day increments in the beginning stages. So he's got at least about two more weeks. But after that, he goes before another judge. And as you would also know, every time he goes before that judge, the level of proof that the prosecutor has to have or concern goes that much higher. And a lot of people are concerned that unless they get more than just this insurance policy, he could walk free in a matter of two weeks. Okay, so Martin, let's focus on those travel insurance policies. We know that Giordano took out those policies for himself and Robin Gardner before their trip for $1.5 million each. The Aruban prosecutor has not said who the beneficiary was, but listen to this from NBC's Today Show. We are now in a position to say that indeed the insurance was for $1.5 million, which is quite a large amount, so it is still one topic we will be uh, pursuing further in the investigation. Okay, Martin, what more can you tell me about this travel insurance policy? Is it like when most of us go online shopping for travel and there's that option to click on $14 and you get travel insurance? Is that the kind of thing we're talking about? Now, this is something more sophisticated. You can get travel insurance, which basically will back up one if you have to get out of that trip for some medical emergency. You can get insurance if you're injured and you want to be flown back to the United States. But, you know, this was death or dismemberment. You know, in, in other words, that if you were to suffer some very bad accident or if you were to die, then there would be a beneficiary. Someone would be paid. In the case of Robin and in the case of Gary, both of them had a policy of $1.5 million. Authorities will say that Gary Giordano's policy, the benefactor, was his mother. They will not say who the benefactor would have been for Robin Gardner. But with all the questioning to Gary Giordano, you have to speculate that even money would say he probably was listed as the benefactor. We had conversations with American Express. They say that Robin Gardner would have specifically had to sign a document saying she named him as the benefactor. Whether Robin knew she was signing such a document, we don't know. All right, Mark Iglarsh, let's bat this around a little bit because I'm used to husbands and wives buying life insurance policies on each other, but these two were unmarried, potentially not even having a relationship. Why on earth would they have life insurance policies? Well, I am, uh, I'm at a loss to find any other reason other than uh, the motive for him to do something to her, and that's from a criminal defense attorney's mouth. I can't come up with any other reason. Usually when my wife and I go on a vacation, we expect to come back. We don't necessarily think one of us might go, so let's get an insurance policy. Geez, I thought you were going to say, Mark, with all of your sophisticated criminal defense attorney training, I thought you were going to yes. say, well, he bought a policy. It was really travel insurance. It included a little bit of life insurance. 
Uh, yes. But you're not even going there. You're saying you think this is well, suspicious. There's one primary reason why I'm not going there, and that's because I haven't been retained to defend him. I'm using simply oh. Mark Iglarge talking about what <laughs> I see, and that coupled mm -hmm. with calm waters, snorkeling, and an alleged taking her away, it just doesn't make sense.